Welcome back. This is Mark Ironmonger from Santa Barbara Wargaming. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing of the Aeneas miniature from Weird Miniatures um, that has recently arrived in the mail. As I said in the last unboxing video where I did Ashes and Dust and Sue, um, when we got the Black Friday sale material that we that we bought for Malifaux. A number of us also got Aeneas, but there was only like a little card saying we're very sorry. We've had some kind of issues getting Aeneas to you and so he'll be on his way. Well, he arrived about a week later and um going to go ahead and check him out. Now I've seen him I've seen him briefly already. I've actually gone ahead and popped it open and you'll see that I have already discarded the clear yellow base, I would say, that comes with him. But other than that, I haven't really been able to, to check him out that much. Um, I've heard pretty good things about him other than his cost from other people in the group and around the internet. So without further ado, we'll just go ahead and see what he looks like. As you can see, um, the box appears how a number of some of the uh, the new Malifaux products have have appeared. Um, it's a it's a thicker box with some some artwork on the sides, and we've got this kind of a plastic front where you can actually see the miniature there. I get a little bit of a, a little bit better of a close up. This uh, this we saw at Gen Con with the new. Um, the new street lights. Uh, there's also a little description here. Aeneas is a celebration of 10 years of weird. He's an outcast mercenary and is able to be used in regular games of Malifaux. Now, even though I have popped this open, um, the condition was was pretty good, but the uh, the little bit of bending here on on the top of the box itself is is how it it actually got to me. So. Not bad, but definitely was not the, my doing when I opened the box originally. Now, opening the box, as I said, I've already popped this open briefly and I got rid of the translucent yellow base that was sitting right here. Um, I don't I don't know why those are popular. Honestly, from Weird, Weird does a number of translucent bases for each of the colors of the various factions that we have. Outcast is 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 kind of this yellow color. I don't get the translucent bases. I don't get the translucent miniatures. I don't I don't understand the purpose of them really at all. So I just went ahead and and got rid of that base. I use uh, bases pretty much exclusively scenic resin bases from Secret Weapon Miniatures. They're really cheap. They look great. There's a large variety, um, and they just they just feel much better in the game so that's the, that's the main reason why why I got rid of that so even though this is an unboxing we'll call it a soft unboxing since I already got rid of that piece and we'll go ahead and oops go ahead and have fumbling unfocused camera work just slide him out there to the box aside what we get, aside from the base that I already got rid of, we get the card, we get the miniature itself, and it comes in this kind of black, black plastic uh, housing for transportation, so you can both display him and so that he's he's fairly well packaged. I'll look at the card in a minute. Some of the comments in some of my other YouTube videos said that uh, wish that I would have gotten into more detail with some of the abilities on the card. It's not really an unboxing but I'll go ahead and do that a little bit in a minute. So, he looks great. I really like the look of the miniature. I think that he's, it just kind of pops right out here. I really like the look of the miniature. I think that he's got a lot of character. He's got a lot of dynamic movement. Um, he's a little top heavy, but shouldn't be that much of an issue. Um, there's the back of him. I haven't read any fluff on Aeneas other than he's a time lord, time master. I guess I can't say time lord, huh? He's kind of like a master of time, and some of his abilities revolve around that. Um, right off the bat, the first thing I notice is this huge gap right here where you have the transition from one part of the cloak to the next, and what appears to be... 
focus. What appears to be some injection points that haven't been molded down at all. This is not the hard plastic that we are used to from Weird Miniatures. This is a soft plastic, so if you played uh, Undercity by Privateer Press or um, uh, the Unleashed Box, a lot of those type of, of miniatures or maybe some of the other companies Miniatures Fantasy Flight likes this type of plastic as well. It's it's soft. It's like a, a, a soft type of plastic, not the hard plastic. Um, I don't know how I like that. It doesn't capture a lot of detail. Um, really reminds me of like when Huggy, Hunger in Darkness, and, um, and the Hanging Tree first came out, that you had issues with, with softness and, and detail, and that's what this kind of kind of is looking like as well. This isn't the greatest camera, but you get to see there's some more mold lines. Mold lines. Plenty of mold lines here. Mold lines, injection points, um, soft plastic. All in all, those are are three things that I don't that I don't like. So even though I like Aeneas and I like the look of the miniature and I've seen them really good in the latest Weird Chronicles, they painted them up and did a really nice job with the scenic base. Um, I don't love the production on this model. Um, it's all in one piece. You don't have to assemble it. I wish that it was on a sprue and I had to assemble it because, frankly, I would have done a better job. As it is, I'm going to have to do a little bit of retroactive cleanup, it looks like. On the bottom, let's see, 10 years of weird, which is awesome, but why did you have to give it to us in this weird, smooth, soft plastic? Okay, um, try to get a little bit of a scale shot there. Stand and, yeah, like I said, he's a little top heavy. You see him kind of tumbling over there a little bit. Looks good in general, but there is going to be a little bit of work required. So now I'll take a look at the card briefly. He is 12 points. He's a henchman as well as rare one. If you want to use him as your master, you can. He's got a cash of one. 12 points is a lot, so he better be good. He's got 12 wounds. Um, some of his abilities real quick. Uh, I'll just go through them super quick. Uh, Stitch in Time, another friendly non-peon, non-leader model with a soul stone, soul stone cache of one or more activates within four. It may discard a card with a value higher than its soul stone cost to receive fast. He's He can really help somebody like Hannah out right off the bat. Um that I'm, I'm looking at um, good ability between the seconds. This model's actions, which deal damage, deal plus one damage to models with a fast or slow condition. It's really awesome since he's able to hand out fast. Stolen time, this model generates one additional AP when it activates. During turns one and two, this AP may only been, be used to take walk actions. From turn three onwards, this AP may only be used to take cast actions so i'm going to assume that he's a bit of a spell slinger on the back but he gets you where he needs to be um walk of five isn't great but with that extra ap to move you'll get him where he needs to be okay beyond your magic reduce all damage this model suffers from casting attack actions by half pretty darn good um, especially if he's used right off the bat. I'm just thinking Frycore. He'll be really good in Frycore. Um, let's see. One bony fingers, uh, six tome, uh, two inches. Um, target suffers two, three, five. It's got a pretty nice damage track there. It ignores armor. Always awesome. This attack can target buried models, regardless of range and light of, line of sight. That is crazy. That is awesome. Um, Leviticus is going to have issues fighting against him. And he's got uh, triggers all over the place. I don't see a ram trigger. Don't see a ram trigger anywhere. Um, temporal Flux, after dealing severe damage to a model in play, bury the target. Unbury the target in base contact with this model at the end of the turn. So what you can basically do is you can bury him and then um, and then 
shenanigans. I'm not going to get into it too much. Um, uh, Crow, a life wasted after damaging the target gains slow, which again can uh, has some interactions with Stitch and Time, possibly. And then we've got the last trigger. Um, a mask shifting sands after damaging an enemy. Place a friendly scheme marker in base contact with each enemy scheme marker in three. Then discard each enemy scheme marker in three. Really awesome. That seems to be the one that you're going to be using most of the time. That's a really good um, mid to late game control ability. Um, let's see, we got one action out of time. Another six built-in tome cast range 10 this time. Target model gains slow. Again, a lot of handing out slow here. Um, and it has one trigger, another tome, the wasting. After succeeding, models within two of this target must succeed on a target number 12 willpower duel or gain the slow condition. So it's just slow, slow, slow. Oops, sorry about that. Handing out slow all over the place. Some of the, uh, the tactical actions, he's got two zero... AP actions, time changes all. Another six tome, six built-in tome. Target number is a nine double tome, so it's good that you got that one tome built in. Make sure that you cheat up with the, the other tome. Uh, range of six, target a marker within six that is not a part of the strategy. You place, you may place the marker within six of its current location. So shenanigans, movement shenanigans for for markers here um playing against hoffman colette move that shit around okay and then you've got a zero another zero ap midnight another six tome target number 16 tome crazy 16 tome that's going to be really hard to get so i'm assuming let's see push all friendly scheme markers to play up to two inches Two tome, look to the future after resolving, place a friendly or enemy scheme marker of your choice within. He is just a late game powerhouse when it comes to uh, scheme markers. That's that's what you're going to be using him for. You're going to be using him to pass out slow, to bury shit, and to um, make sure that scheme markers, or markers in general, or are where they they need to be towards the late game. So... There he is again. He's really does not. Okay, he's going to stay like that. There he is again. Aeneas, um, time, not time lord, and <laughs> a master of time. Let's see what the back of the box describes him as real quick. Um, he goes by many names, and all of them whisper of that which is lost and that which will never be found. Aeneas delights in removing others from time itself, disrupting the whims of fate. He does indeed. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign out here. Thanks for watching. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, again, Mark Ironmonger coming at you from Santa Barbara Wargaming. And I'll catch you next time.